What's up guys, it's Bob here. Today I've got Brembo, our shop dog, and we are going to be discussing the Ballinger AFR 500C and how to physically install it in your vehicle. All right, cool. So we're gonna go over here to our new 2017 Camaro SS. We actually just bought this car. It's a salvage car. First one we've ever bought as a salvage car at the tuning school. For the purposes just as a you know, car and some drag strip use, maybe some road force use, but no street use, just off-road only. So we, uh, we weren't really sure what we were gonna get with this. And like I said, I never bought a salvage car. This was a flood vehicle. We're gonna make some cool videos so you'll know what actually happened with this. Don't look too close but the water got in places it probably shouldn't have. So that aside, we're gonna talk a little bit about where to place your wide band in the exhaust system. So the first thing you need to know is, am I doing a permanent installation or is this temporary? So if it's permanent, meaning you're, you're gonna actually leave the wide band in the vehicle permanently, or you want the best resolution for doing your tuning session, you're gonna want a wide, uh, weld in an O2 sensor bung that comes with the kit. And so essentially, this just gets welded in and you want to put it about six inches back from where the primary tubes collect from the collector. So somewhere in this range would be great. And the reason being is, is you want to give some time for those gases to collect up. So you'll get one sample from this entire bank. You don't want a sample from just one primary tube because then you're only seeing what that one cylinder is doing and it makes for difficult tuning. So this is your best bet. If you can weld in a bung, do it, weld in the bung. This is what you'll see very high-end builds do. Uh, but if you're just having your car dyno at a typical dyno shop, they don't always do this, which is okay. They'll use the second method, which is after the catalytic converter, there's always a secondary O2 sensor. And so typically you'll take that sensor out for the session only, and you put in the Y band for the session only, and then you'll do your testing on the dyno or at the drag strip, whatever you happen to be doing. And also you get great resolution because it's close to engine. The downside is uh, you do tend to read about a half a point leaner than the engine truly is because of the action of the catalytic converter. So just understand that as you're tuning. So if you see 12 O at your Y band, it's actually 11 and a half at the engine or a little bit richer than it's saying at the Y band. So these two options are your best bets, but there's a third option. Come on over here. So we'll use our challenger here as the example. Now, this is probably the one that people kind of frown upon the most is the tailpipe clamp, right? And so you'll read on the internet, people are like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. There is a time and a place for a tailpipe clamp. And I've been doing this a long time and I can tell you, I'm glad I have one. And here's why. Maybe you don't have access to get under the vehicle. Maybe you're at the drag strip and a buddy's having a problem and you need to be able to scan it and see what the vehicle is actually doing. This is a great example. So it simply goes into your exhaust system, you clamp it down or you bungee it, however you need to, to secure this so it gets a good sample of airflow. So it's quick and it's easy. That's the upside. Now here's the downside. Um, it is at the very back of the system, as opposed to what we talked about earlier. This means your sample is the slowest it can be. So if you're at the strip and you're doing a full throttle pass and you have to make a correction at 3000 RPM because that's where this read the problem, the problem is probably a little sooner than it really thinks it is because of the transport delay, which is the amount of time it takes for that exhaust gas to get from the engine where it's marked all the way out the tailpipe. Not a big deal, but you just need to know that going into it. Other downside is uh, you could really only have good samples at full throttle. Idle and part throttle, there's not enough flow of the exhaust past this to get a good reading at the sensor in most cases. So we don't recommend this for any idle or part throttle tuning, but we definitely is, is fine if you're in a pinch for full throttle. That's all we have time for today. But in part two of the Ballinger series, we'll be going over in depth how to set up your new wideband in the HP Tuners VCM scanner.